Hello, my friends. Welcome to Together Run 16. 16 already. This is pretty cool. I'm loving seeing the amount of you who are doing this as back to back to back, doing it as long runs. Uh, maybe I should consider doing a long run version. What do you think? That might be pretty exhausting, though. I'd be willing to try. All right. Anyway, let's get to Together Run 16. <laughs> Good morning, friends. I shouldn't say good morning. I need to stop saying that because you could be doing this anytime. Hello, my friends. We are going to begin today, as it was popular, with go find yourself a tree or something that is nature. Put your hand on it for a second. Could be the grass, could be a little tuft of grass, uh, anything. Something that's nature. Maybe find a leaf in a tree or something. Just touch it for a second, just to ground yourself, just to feel like you are, remind yourself that you're out here in nature. We are surrounded, a lot of us, by man-made things, but nature is all around us. And if you can't touch anything, just take a real deep breath. Let's all do that, actually, and then we'll begin. Ready? All right. Are you ready to begin? In three, two, and one. And off we go. It's a little darker here where I'm recording this morning, which is a, a sign that maybe the uh, the nights are growing longer uh, already. Um, but that's okay. We have, well, here in St. Louis, we have seasons for a reason. Somewhat, actually. <laughs> the summers, I think, are gonna, the heat's gonna stay for longer in the coming years, but still have somewhat of seasons. So, welcome to Together Run 16. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you are, if this is your first one, welcome. Uh, I'm loving seeing what you're thinking of these, that you are passing these along, sharing them, putting posts up about them. Ah, it's amazing to see. And uh, wonderful that you could pass that gift on to people you care about, because we all know there's so much noise. The amount of people I've heard recently saying along the lines of, you know, got a massive list of podcasts or books I want to listen to and I just can't get started um, and I understand my main show may be in there for you and you're missing some episodes but again as I've said before that's okay on my end um, I would rather you look after your mental health and not do that just for the sake of doing it because you feel like you owe me um, but if these together runs are something different and something that is bringing you mental health and calm and peace, wonderful. And I'm so happy to hear that. So we're going to begin, as we always do, with a body scan. So in just a moment, I will tell you when to begin. We're going to scan down from the top of our heads, working our way through the various parts of our body, just paying attention to how things feel, how you feel, and then we check in a few times in the rest of the run, and we'll see if it's any different. So, if you're ready to begin, just pay attention to what the very top of your head feels like. If you can't feel it, you can just picture it. We'll start at the top of your head. You're going to scan down through your eyes. If you are uh, scrunching your eyes, scrunching around your eyes, just loosen that off. Going in through your nose, through your ears, into your jaw. We also tend to hold a lot of tension in our jaws. If that feels tense, tight, 
just loosen that off too. Going down through the back of the neck, front of the neck, the shoulders. Let's give those shoulders a little, just a little roll. Just roll them from the front up to the back and have them settle there where they probably should be sitting. But sometimes we tend to hold them uh, high when we're tense. Moving down your arms, into your hands and your fingers. Fingers should be nice and relaxed. Remember what Mary Kane said in that interview about holding an egg. Can you hold an egg in your hands? That's how relaxed you should be. You can envision doing that. And then she did say, which I love. Has anyone tried it? Yeah. Of when you get like 400 to go in a race. Imagine throwing your egg down, smashing it and off you go. I love that. All right, back to your torso, through your chest and into your stomach, into your hips, the pelvis, around your glutes, going into your hamstrings, quads, into your calves and shins, going into your ankle, and your arch and your toes. How's everything feel? Just pay attention and make a little note of the things that do feel tight or stiff or off. And we'll see if it loosens up throughout the run or if, you know, you've just got some tight bits. And that's okay too. Okay, so next I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to imagine I'm with you and I was asking you this and you felt comfortable enough with me that you could answer truthfully. How are you? How are you feeling mentally, really? Um, as I'm recording this, Simone Biles last night pulled out of the team event in the gymnastics. You will know by now whether she continued on with the rest of them um, and I'm not just bringing this up because it's an American I'm British I'm more tied to my home country it's not about being American it's about the fact that one of the greatest athletes of all time stepped away from her sport because her mental health wasn't right and I think that's amazing that women are getting to that point especially a black woman, to be able to say, you know, my head isn't in the right place, I need to do this for me. So, I want you to answer truthfully. I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to think about your answer. So, how are you? Okay, thank you for telling me in your mind. <laughs> Appreciate you sharing that. And as for me, feeling anticipatory, is that a word? Like in anticipation. Uh, I feel had some major opportunities coming up and I'm just waiting to hear the final um, decision, I guess. Uh, some of them are pretty much there. Some of them were still in the early stages. Um, but either way, I'm waiting, trying to be patient, waiting for those. I'm also well aware that um, if things appear to be moving the way they are, I'm gonna have to watch myself. I've talked before about how I tend to, <laughs> I 
I love the movie The Greatest Showman. Um, and I feel like I tend to move along the spectrum of, what's his name? Toby Barnum's life. Um, so I want to keep in mind what is most important to me. And if all these temptations come up, I need to be able to say no sometimes to be with my family. So I do have a little bit of, um, not fear, but just um, hoping that I can, yes, put my career at the front, but not at the expense of the way my little girls view themselves in this world because I know I'll never get this time back. And that's my truth. Okay. Are we ready to do the census check-in? Okay, so to start, I want you to take a nice deep breath, as deep as you can while running. Ready? We'll do it together. Let's do one more. Feels good. What did you smell? If you need to do a third one, go for it. I smell some flowers of unknown variety that I was running past. Oh, I'm not good at identifying flowers because I can't tell you what they are. But they're strong smelling. What do you taste? I taste athletic greens. It was the first thing I did when I woke up. And confess as I was trying to get out the door did not brush my teeth before I left this time so I still taste athletic greens all right I want you to remove your headphones in a minute and listen out for what you hear doesn't matter if you're in a, an urban jungle where all you hear is man-made things it doesn't matter if you are somewhere very quiet, there isn't much to hear, or you're in the suburbs where you feel like it's just normal sounds. I want you to take them out and pay attention to what you hear. Not my sounds, your sounds. Let's just go do that. Anything different that you don't normally hear, wouldn't normally pay attention to, it's just so used to hearing it, but maybe me bringing this to your attention makes you recognize that it is a sound that not everyone hears. It may sound normal to us, but it's different. Okay, let's use our sense of touch and pay attention to what you feel. I don't want you to think about this, like, oh, I need to feel something on my arms or I need to feel something on my face. Just see what jumps out to you, what they say in, uh, in um, Buddhism, I think. Well, in the meditations I've done, I've been open awareness, where you're just jumping from thing to thing that you notice in your body. So let's just do that for a few minutes, pay attention, or well, not a few minutes, a little bit of time.
what did you feel? For me, first thing that jumped out was the sweat running down the side of my face. The next thing I noticed, my knees just gently touching as I put, they pass one another. I noticed the phone in my hand. I noticed my other hand touching my palm, my fingers touching my palm. I noticed my watch bouncing up and down slightly on my wrist. I noticed my feet in my socks, etc. Okay, and finally, the one we overuse and we need to get better at using the others, which is why we brought the other, did the others first. What do you see? Let's turn to the right. This time we usually do the left. Let's turn to the right, look down and up. Please make sure you're being safe. If you need to just look forward, do that. What do you see? Try to hone in on a detail you wouldn't normally notice. Maybe it's the name of a store you run by all the time. Maybe it's a particular flower paying attention to the, yeah, features of the flower. What do you see? And look at the diagonal of the right. What do you see there? All around. Just pay attention. I see some weeds up by the railway, which I'm running under now, that were as tall as me. And makes me feel a little less bad about the, how bad the weeds are in my yard. <laughs> what do you see when you look forward? Cool around. Let's pick something in the distance, far ahead. What do you see? Pick something and focus on it. Ideally something you don't know what it is yet. And you can try and just stay on there until you figure out what it is. And look to the left, the diagonal. What do you see? I see a performing art center. It's a new, pretty cool, some like kind of artwork on the wall on the inside and turn fully to the left. Well, not turn to the left, turn your head. What do you see there? Again, try and pick out details of things that you wouldn't otherwise notice. And that's our scan. How are you feeling now? Now we've done that. So many of you are appreciating these check-ins. And I think it's kind of amazing that we're now at 17 minutes and this is where we've got to just by being in tune with our body um, and of course our brain is always trying to create stories and tie things into past experiences that's natural and I'm doing it too but I still think it's good for us to just be Paying attention as much as we can to our senses, kind of saying to our brain, thanks for that story, but I'm just gonna keep checking in. I'm trying to cross the street here, but uh, I think I can go. Um, and We just don't often spend a run where the first 17 minutes or even five minutes are about how we're feeling. So well done to you for taking the time to do that. I wish I could say that I take this approach into every run, but I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, this is good too, to really check in with my body and how it's feeling and uh, just be with the running motion rather than using it as a means for something. I 
don't know what possessed me to choose this route, but it is pretty hilly. Good practice for Boston, good practice for New York, and good practice for the Golden Gate Classic, which is the 50k I'm doing in Marin County two weeks after New York. Which is 13 days after New York. So I may need your help, friends, to keep me from going nuts uh, in those races so that I can get to this 50k. Oh, I'm sorry, we are hitting the train. These trains are so loud. I'm gonna turn around. It's just about to cross over the railway. And uh, that thing is like six minutes long. So we're gonna run the other direction. <laughs> so yeah, for the talking piece today, I've had people ask about what I'm doing for marathon training, what my advice for marathon training is. So I think today we'll focus in on that. Um, and maybe have some fun, light-hearted, silly question things I'll tell you about later that's not so serious and uh, information-filled. Um, before I begin, let's take this moment to take our picture. So bring yourself to a walk. Hey, okay, stop your watch. And take a picture of you with wherever you are. I don't care what you're seeing. I don't care how glamorous it is. I just want to see you. There's another running, runner coming my way. So she's going to run past me and be like, what is this woman doing? But that's okay. I want you to take a picture. And either share it on social media, show me what you see, or just send it to me. A lot of you do that, and that's good. And well, my running lady has stopped. So, good. <laughs> so take a picture. Have you done it? If you're still running, you can keep running. But let's uh, take a picture while you're running if you can. All right, you ready? And off we go. Before I go any further, I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for this run. You can, it's been with me for many years now, it's gonna be what I'll drink and take. It's my fuel in Boston, in New York, in the Golden Gate Classic 50K. I will be using you can in all three of those as my source of fuel. Yes, that means I'll be carrying it with me. Need to figure out how I'm gonna do that with majors as uh, um, don't think you're allowed to bring packs with you, are you? That's kind of what I've become used to. But I'll figure that part out. Anyway, so um, I've, I've been taking you camp for years. I've carried it myself. I've used it in my bottles when I ran my PR of 236. I am somehow headed back towards the train again. All right, I have to turn off again. Um, uh, what was I saying? Yes, so I like to use the Cran Raspberry in my bottles. Um, oh, it's gonna get loud for a minute, friends. This is running for real, right? That's my not thinking of going near the railway tracks in the morning. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me turn away from it. Oh, that's the end of it. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're good. So, you can. I like the Cran Raspberry flavor. I like to mix. I actually double scoop it, so I put two scoops in with some water and then pour it into my bottle so there's double strength because that means that I can 
get more bang for my buck and then take in water alternative alternately alternatively with it I also have heard amazing things about you can edge which is a gel so if you're a gel person or you've liked you can but you don't want to carry it I do have a gel I may well suck up my lack of liking orange and use it instead of carrying it uh, we'll see just not an orange person don't know why I like oranges just don't like orange flavoured things but it's really popular people love it it's amazing that you can have you know all the goodness of you can while um, it being in a gel form I mean, that was the biggest question that people had for me over the years was when are they going to come out with a gel? So now they have. So you can use code TINA, you can, at youcan.co forward slash TINA, or you can just click the link in the show notes and I will, um, I will give you 20% off with the code. So TINA, you can, I'll remind you of that later. And yeah, if you haven't already given it a go, give it a go. We also have a delicious cookies and cream protein powder that I have. I mix with milk, uh, usually oat milk, but any kind of milk. After my runs, I had it yesterday after my workout and uh, it was delicious. Again, you can use Kytina, you can. I will remind you of that. Okay, so, said I was doing these two marathons. I recognize that most people aren't gonna do two marathons in a season. I have never done that either. Um, I wanna start by saying that the first one I'm doing at Boston, I'm being a guide for a wonderful, inspiring, genuine, beautiful human name's Kyle, Kyle Robido, and I'm so excited, like, he is an amazing guy, and I'm honoured and humbled and just excited to not only be a guide for him, but have four, I don't even know, four-ish, four, maybe five (laughs) hours to spend, depending on how he's doing maybe in the threes, um, with him, to spend with Kyle and get to know him on a you know, deeper level. So the first one for me isn't going to be at my effort. It will be whatever he wants. And so that is what for me allows me to be able to do all of these is that I'm not going for it. Um, and so in essence that one will be a training run for the other two probably more so for the 50k actually and so it sounds like a crazy schedule sounds amazing but it's also maybe not as intense as it looks and then with New York my current plan is to run it hard as my last long run but not all out problem is I know myself (laughs) and Boston 2019 I was exhausted going in scheduled in way too many events in the 24 hours 48 hours before the race and I was exhausted Um, but Even with that, I could not pull myself off in effort-wise. I just um, was giving it all I had. And that was on that day, three hours or 2.57. But that was everything I had. And New York is New York. So... (laughs) There's a good chance I won't be able to pull myself back 
and I may get myself into trouble, but if I do, that's on me, and I will have to accept that maybe I'm not going to have the best race, best opportunity to succeed at the 50k if I do that. That said, the question was, oh, okay, so we've got a minute and a half left for the 30 minute group. Oh, truck coming, it's cross. All right, we're gonna go in a nice little park for a little bit, get in the, away from the traffic. It's busier this morning than it normally is. Um, so, what am I doing for training? A lot of people have been wondering. And I, Steve is giving me suggestions on workouts, but with the way that I'm kind of making up my own race schedule, really not wanting to be honest, a strict, you know, eight miles here, seven miles there, workout here. Um, and the fact that I'm doing three races within two months. Um, Steve and I agreed it's probably not the best for him and I to do that uh, because he is very much like, he doesn't care how fast someone is, but he wants you to commit. So I'm not committing in the way that I maybe should be um, in terms of, you know, yesterday we hadn't, even talked about what workout I was going to do. He is still suggesting what workouts I do, by the way. Um, but I woke up and I saw what the weather was going to be like the next few days. And I decided that I was going to do my workout that day because it was too hot, would be too hot today and tomorrow. Um, or the fact that I'm kind of picking and choosing how much I'm running. And it's just, there's too many variables. So I don't want us to argue or I don't want us to, you know, we've got two young kids, <laughs> we've already got enough on our plate. So we're fine, but I just, that's explaining that in case, uh, uh, as you may have seen, Steve is now starting to coach athletes. Uh, he has selected a group of 10 people to start with from those who applied. And there will be more openings in the future if he wants to add that. But anyway, so he's giving me the workouts, telling me what workouts to do. But I also have been conferring with Mario Frioli, who's been just giving more general advice on how to structure this. Because it's not really a typical training schedule segment, is it? Especially the, oh, sorry, 30 minute group. <laughs> I hope you are walking. <laughs> got totally lost there so we're going to do a few strides if you are the 30 minute group and were distracted by my rambling on we'll just give you 30 seconds but then we're going to do two strides as we always do if you haven't done one of these before and you're in the 30 minute group you're just going to be walking for a moment um, if you're in the 45 or 60 you can keep running and we're just gonna pick up the pace. Not sprinting, we're running up say about 80%. You're just trying to increase your cadence and just for about 15 seconds, we are gonna just increase our speed dramatically, but not all out sprint, as I said. And then you can walk again or if you're doing 45 to 60, you can jog and we'll do one more. Okay, so are we ready? I chose a bad place to do this today. Three, two, one. And so to a jog or a walk and do one more of those. So if you're jogging, take it nice and easy so you can get your breath back. If 
you are walking, just walk. And it's okay if you're not going to be totally recovered going into this next one. Again, these aren't supposed to be crazy. They're just supposed to be you picking up the pace, stretching out the legs, but not striding out the legs. We're not trying to take big steps. Okay, we're ready. In three, two, and one. And jog. If you're in the 30 minute group, great job today. Thank you for joining me. Can you let me know if you're in the 30 minute group? I haven't really heard many people saying they are. So I want to make this inclusive. Everything I say is meaning to be for everyone to do. Um, And so I want to keep this in regardless, uh, just to make it fair. And, you know, I understand 45 minute run is not realistic for some, some of us sometimes. So keeping that in there regardless, but I'd love to hear who's in the 30 minute group. Please take a picture now or send me the other one and share it with me. All right, 45 minute group. I seem to have lost the trail. Okay, we're just running in the middle of grass right now. (laughs) I was gonna go in the trails, but I've lost the path. Um, So, um, where was I? about marathon training and doing the two races Um, oh and I guess just you know the fact of doing uh, a road marathon two weeks before a trail race is a bit different you know like you're not it's not like I'm doing a, a trail marathon a few weeks before a 50k so obviously yes that depends on me being able to pull back and be smart about it um but for that talking to mario uh has who has said the biggest thing i need to do is practice downhills um as that for me going into a 50k is going to be the biggest shock to the system is all the downhills um of the 50k that I'm not otherwise going to be used to. What is with the trains this morning? Everywhere. Um, My body isn't used to uh, running downhill. And I have been bitten by that before. With any of you training for CIM, I do have a training or a race guide on my um, website uh, about my experience there what I learned, what we didn't do right, because we screwed that up. Um, We thought it was all going to be down, but we didn't think about the rolling hill side of it. And it is rolling hills, the first at least 15 miles. Um, So we do have a race guide there. But all that to say, I know how (laughs) that can go if you are prepared. So the biggest thing I'm going to be doing is hills. Yesterday I did three by one mile uphill, jogging back down in between. Uh, It wasn't really jog, I'd say it was more like medium pace in between. Uh, And I'm just going to be trying to do hills and everything. Um, Maybe not today, ideally, but somehow that's how it's ended up. (laughs) Uh, Because that's what I've got to prepare for. Same for you, if you are doing Boston, New York, or a hilly race, you want to make sure you're doing your long runs definitely over hills. You want to make sure you've got some workouts over hills. In the past, I always used to like to do my hard days on um, flat ground so that I could run as fast as I could. You know, I was worried about splits and things and just you know my psychology part of proving to myself how fit I was I uh, can't do that anymore or shouldn't be doing that so the 
workouts will be over hills a lot of the time. The long runs will definitely be over hills. And I even would make an argument for day to day trying to add hills. Obviously, if you've had a really tough long run or a really long workout, it's okay if you want to take it really easy and find a flat area to recover. But otherwise, it's probably a good idea to be finding hills day to day as well. Oh, speaking of hills, going up this trail hill, it's actually right next to where I ran yesterday. And then it's kicking my butt. I'm honestly thinking about walking for a second because I uh, don't want to be too breathy <laughs> while I'm recording these. So I'll give myself a few more seconds. And if I feel like I need to walk, I do not have a problem with that. But I'm over the worst of the hill now. Um, so on that note, um, I said about practicing over hills. The other thing that's critical for the hills is strength training. Doing eccentric loading stuff. That means heavier weights, slow on the way down, and st you know standing up fast or bringing things up fast. I'm gonna walk this little bit because I don't want to make myself be like. <gasps> See, no shame in hiking or walking a, a second. Okay. Um, some bird thinks there's shame there. I'm not listening to you, bird. <laughs> uh, eccentric strength training. Now I've been honest with you in an earlier together run. My strength training, I've just completely fallen off the bandwagon. Um, I'm running six days a week and I just sometimes feel like I can't keep up with my life of all the things I admit I'm trying to do. I have two kids and they obviously get a good chunk of time, which they should, as does Steve, but maybe not enough. But I'm trying to do too much. And so trying to think about spending two hours a day exercising with doing a run on six of the days and then having so one of those days we work a run and a strength training and then using a day off on strength training has just been really hard for me to motivate myself through. Um, I love having a rest day, like a full do nothing day. Um, and so the idea of using that up to go do strength training hasn't really appealed to me but Mario has said to me that I need it or I'm going to end up injured and so I have a call with Drew tomorrow and I'm going to get back on it because I need to. By the way if you aren't sure what you're doing Drew does have an app um, and his app is actually what I'm using. You have this app, he will do some assessments with you and then he will set you a program just like we did with Strong Stars, if you know what that is, a program that is tailored to you. And it will be exactly what your body needs based on your weaknesses and what you're doing. Like I said, if you're doing a race with lots of downhills, you need eccentric training. Um, if you're doing a flat race, then you don't. You would do different exercises. So if you want actually more information on that, I'll be sure to put that in the show notes for this run. So you can go check it out. And I have a coupon code as well. So I'll put that in there as well. Um, so then, yes. So, uh, strength training will be a major component 
obviously the long runs and the workouts with my long runs I'm going to be alternating between road and trail so for me I'm going to do one week of road one week of trail um the road one will obviously be harder more intense um I'll be doing workout parts in it as I am choosing to only do one workout a week and I make my long run really hard uh and so the long, the road one will be hard and the trail one will probably be more time on my feet hopefully getting to the point where I'm just I'm running three to four hours up to four hopefully uh, to practice time on my feet um, and what was I gonna say uh, oh I'm sure there's some of you wondering am I gonna go over distance what's the longest I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do the marathon um, the two marathons that'll be the furthest I go uh, and maybe on the trails you know that'll be I'll be doing four maybe four and a half not sure though seeing how I feel but I feel my body is strong enough to be able to handle the additional miles with that training and again with what I'm doing I want to be careful that I'm not overdoing it overtraining myself so that I'm not able to make it all right 45 minute group you can stop and walk for a moment we'll do some strides in about a minute two more strides and then we will head back on a 60 minute group well I don't know where you're going you could be doing a street point to point run but for me I'm on my way home <laughs> so let's just take a few moments 45 minute group to recover and we're going to these strides and with these strides by the way if you have the choice between up and down probably would, would lean towards doing up over down but if you are doing some uh, <laughs> downhill races, maybe that's an opportunity for you to practice running downhill at a speed. But you really want to watch your form. Make sure that you're not overstriding because you will be leading yourself in a place for injury otherwise. And when I say that in your form, you want to make sure you're almost like peering over a cliff should make you lean lean forward a little bit. What we don't want to be doing is folding at the hips. So you want to lean, like almost, yeah, like looking over a cliff and that will naturally lean you forward and make sure that your feet are under you. Okay, are we ready? In three, two, and one. And so to a jog. Or a walk. And we'll do another one in just a minute. And by the way, I want to say with these, when I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I believe a lot of people miss with marathon training. Uh, the biggest thing people don't do and is the reason they end up cramping tell you about that in a minute but just want to say uh, Steve and I do have training plans online for 5k 10k well there's actually a mile one two one mile 5k 10k half marathon and marathon 100% effort based uh, if you want to go check those out again I'll put a link in the show notes um, and they are available very popular people really enjoy them uh, and yeah, I said effort-based. The mile one has paces. Maybe the 10K? I think so, yeah. 
the others do not. The two longer ones do not. And it's a bit of a hard time to get used to it, but I'm telling you, it is amazing. And it will change your whole running life forever. And you can use this plan for the rest of your life if you want to. That's the special thing about it is that it is, um, can be tailored to whatever speed you're at. Okay, we ready to do another stride. Three, two, and one. And so, to walk or jog. If you are in the 45 minute group, thank you for joining me. There's links to the training plans in there. There's links to you can with 20% off. If you are marathon training, it's 100% what I recommend. No stomach upsets. All right, we'll see you on Friday. Okay, 60 minute group. Got just over 10 minutes to go. And yes, so I'd imagine if you're doing this 60 minute run, you are likely going to do a marathon at some point in your future. Uh, maybe this is your long run of the week and you're not. In which case, I'm sorry, but that this has been so marathon heavy. But I think we can all still learn something, even if we use it and adapt it somehow to our own life situation. I mentioned before there about believe that people make a fatal error often in marathon training, and they do. And what that is, is I mentioned about doing uphills and downhills, and yeah, thinking about the course in mind, and even at the sake of your splits and going fast, uh, choosing to run over hills. But I do think when so many people come to me and others saying my legs cramped at between 18 and say 18 and 22-ish, my legs cramped, I couldn't move, um, I felt like I was doing well with electrolytes, or often people do say it must have been my electrolytes when it wasn't. Um, the cramping with electrolytes, as you know, with a cough, cramp or cramp, is very like spasmy, not like um, not like a shutdown. And the shutdown or that other kind of cramp or just legs being unable to move is because you've pushed your body too far too early. That's the simplicity of it. Now. What you can do with that is make sure during your marathon build-up you get a few workouts that are under your race pace, so faster than what you hope your race pace to be. Now, if you're running a hilly race, I just said you want to sacrifice the speed for being able to um, make sure that you can run over hills, but if you are um, doing that for most of the time, you should have at least a few, maybe two or three, where you are running on flatter ground or on downhills for your workouts. So your body runs at a pace faster than you expect. So maybe that would be three by three miles on a flat ground or two by three miles if you, if you, depending on what you're ready for. But I would encourage, yeah, two by, three by three, two by four, one of those workouts, maybe four by two, if that sounds more doable for you, where you are running, you know, 15 seconds per mile, at least faster, than what you hope to be running on race day. And 
maybe trying to cut down even more. Obviously, I said 15 seconds. It's really relative. Um, you know, for at the elite level, for me, where I'm, the time running is so short, it may be five seconds per mile. Uh, but the point is, it should be drastically quicker than you're doing your other stuff. Um, and again, I'm not about running obsessed with the watch. I actually, as you know, tell people to run by feel, not by pace. But we know what it feels like. If you're running by feel, you know what a certain pace feels like in your body. And you need to make sure there's some extended efforts at a faster pace. Um, so at a pace that is feels faster than what you're running. Um, and the reason that helps is just because, you know, in our, we practice our long runs, but we do them mostly at like easy pace or with hard efforts in it. And then we have the hard efforts at our race pace, um, but they're intervals, it's not extended. And so on race day, when we add in the two of them together, if we haven't done the uh, underpace work, our body's just not ready. Um, and so, again, with that training plan Steve and I created, explains that well, we'll have you doing that. And people love them. They've, so many people have run massive PRs with them. So yeah, I'll put links to those if you want them. Uh, I did say I was going to make <laughs> do some fun stuff. We're at 55 minutes, so if you are not a marathon person, you're a shorter distance person, I apologize that you had to have 55 minutes of that training. Maybe at some point I'll do a 5K one. Yeah, what do you think about that? Let me know. Should I do kind of a... Make sure I ask Steve some solid things to say. But do like a 5K one, a 10K one, a half marathon one of where I just talk about some best practices. I'd love to hear that. I mean, and with marathon, I could easily have run a whole nother run talking about more things. Again, it's difficult for me this time with somewhat of a weird schedule and a schedule that's not about one goal race that's a time goal so it is going to be different for those of you who are picking a goal race and that's again where I've, <laughs> the training plans have what you need but I said I would talk about some fun stuff um fun stuff what's some silly stuff I could share with you um of course you know when you think You've got something, you've got a pressure to say something, you can't think of anything. Um, I've been reading Ali Wong's book, Dear Girls. It's a comedian, uh, and it's a book of letters to her daughters. Now, obviously, they're pretty crude. They're pretty, like, <laughs> I'm not sure I would ever say the thing she's saying to my kids, ever. Um, and maybe that's her, or maybe it's just kind of written for the audience, but it is really funny. Like I find myself chuckling while I'm listening, uh, while I'm reading, which is really good. Um, been watching a bit of the Olympics, but honestly, I don't know if it's just NBC over here and the amount of ads you have to watch, um, or if it's just kind of the let down of the Olympics in general right now, but I'm just not really feeling it. Maybe it's the athletics hasn't started, but like, I usually love the gymnastics, but I find it quite stressful this time around. Like knowing that, you know, I don't want them to fall. I want all of them to do it perfectly. And it's not about, well, one, there's a problem in that statement, right? Because them trying to do it perfectly is why really a big chunk of Olympians are miserable because 
they have to be perfect. And we know there is no such thing as perfection. But yeah, I've been finding it quite stressful watching them perform because I want them to nail it. And I know how horrible it feels when you don't nail it. Um, and especially as someone who totally bombed on one of her opportunities to run for her country, like totally bombed, I know how crappy that can feel. And so it doesn't matter what country they're from, I just want them all to do well. But either way, yeah, I don't know why. I'm not feeling it. Is anyone else feeling that way? I'm curious. All right. Let's do... We'll do one stride before, then we'll walk for the last one. Okay, ready? And three, two, and one. And so to a walk, or jog, sorry. We've got another 30 seconds to go. Walk, and then we'll do one more. So glad I have you guys to keep me accountable for these um, run, uh, strides. <laughs> Not really very good usually at doing them. Last little bit of our run together and we're going to finish today with touching nature just as we started. Oh wow, I ran a bit faster than I have been on those, I think. I can't remember. Um, not that that was intentional, I just want to say. Um, it just surprised me. I'm not going to say the number, but the amount of miles I had hit. Um, okay, so we'll take 30 seconds and then we'll do one more stride. And then we'll touch something in nature. And then we'll be done. I'm going to go stand in my neighbor's sprinkler. <laughs> oh, my little girls are looking at me. Oh, they're waving at me out the window. All right, let's do the stride quickly. And walk. Let's... Take a moment to touch some nature. Take a look around, what do you see? I see some lovely tomatoes coming into, into themselves. Thank you so much for joining me, friends. Be sure to use hashtag TogetherRun16. Upload your photo, send it to me. I appreciate you. See you next time. Before we end this episode, I just want to take a moment to shout out my podcast editor, Jeremy Nessel, who has done such a wonderful job of looking after my podcast, taking out all the mis mishaps in the episodes, while still keeping in the, the vulnerability and the realness and the rawness of the conversation. This is not one of those podcasts where I take out the ums and the ers and the the sometimes the delay in, in words, because I think it's very important to keep that authenticity. We're surrounded by perfected and manicured everything and I think it's really important that running for real stays that way so thank you to Jeremy for your work I also want to thank Maria Vargas and Amber Moore who are also part of my team they've been a big part of this community and me being able to build this brand so just want to give them a shout out too all right let's get right back to the end of this episode Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to go check out youcan.co forward slash Tina Muir to get yourself 20% off. You can also go to youcan.co and use code Tina Youcan to get yourself 20% off. There are links in those show notes. Before you go anywhere, go check it out right now. You are supporting me by getting these products, trying them out, and I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't really mean it. And while you have your phone in your hand, please, can you go leave a rating and review and be sure you are subscribed on your favorite podcast player. I appreciate you so much. Um, and I will see you next Friday or this Friday for a rep episode of Running For Real.